Happy Easter, everybody! Me and Yi Fire reporting live from the Robin Griggs spaceship with an episode that I made quite a while ago, but I never shared it with you due to an error. Now let me explain that. This is Oriental Techniques of Pain and Pleasure, and I was a little confused and uneducated when it comes to Annie Sprinkle. You see, her name is at the very top of this box next to this slutty woman, so I thought this was Annie Sprinkle. Well, it's not, so ignore the fact that I call Mistress Candace Annie Sprinkle the whole time. I hope you guys enjoyed this old episode, and Happy Easter! Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. So, what movie are we doing this week? Well, let's take a look back and find out. Ready? Oriental Techniques of Pain and Pleasure. When I pulled this movie out of the box, I had no idea what it was. No idea here. Now this movie stars the wonderful Annie Sprinkle. How do I know that name? Mistress Candace, Annie Sprinkle. I think I read about her in Cinema Sewer. After watching this movie, I can safely say that Annie Sprinkle is one of my very favorite actresses from back in the day. High production values make this a must. Definitely triple X. So with that said, are you guys ready to start Oriental Techniques of Pain and Pleasure? It's a long title, but I'm ready to start it. There's a familiar face on the TV. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this shit in. Anyway, ready? Play. So this movie has a very big cast, including Ron Jeremy, and it was directed by... Director of The Taming of Rebecca. Instead of having such a long title, they could have just called this movie Don't Pick Up the Notepad. Because these two girls are walking home at night and they see the notepad on the ground and they pick it up and say, Oh, it looks like some sort of Chinese manuscript. And they take it into their house and just kind of throw it on the ground. And she just threw the Chinese pamphlet down. It lands sort of behind the couch next to a small little table behind a house plant. And this little pad looks like something that a waitress would take your order on. So this white guy named Chow Li calls up a mistress and says, I dropped the manuscript but I saw two whores pick it up and I'm outside their house right now. Somebody's knocking at the door and some guys just burst in and are attacking the ladies. There are these two men and they're dragging these women out of their apartment and they're putting them in the back of a van. So they take these two women down to this dungeon slash basement that had some really great graffiti written on the wall in red spray paint. Now it's a basement and on the wall it says cock sucking slut in big letters. They say, where's the manuscript? And the girl says, I don't have it. One of the men calls up their boss, the mistress, and says, she's still not giving it up, but I think she'd be terrific for our little stage show. Till then, we're gonna fuck her in a rape-like fashion. All right, so Contusion's father is calling her a bitch and choking her, saying, look at me, suck my dick. You wanna die? So he puts his dick into her mouth and says, suck it, bitch. And while she's sucking it, he continues to tell her to do just so. Suck it, bitch, suck it. I really wish she would have stopped and said, you know what, that's what I'm doing. He just hit her in the head with it. You know, usually the women are like, ah, hitting themselves with the cocks, but he just whacked her with the cock and she said, ah, shit. He just said lay back and he's lifting up her legs and he's eating everything in between. Uh oh, she's sucking another dick before going on stage. He's slapping her with his dick too, except on her tits. Now I have heard so many slang terms for cum, but this next one was new to me. Did he just call his cum space grease? Space grease? Now that I've never heard. 
finally they take her upstairs and this is when we see Annie Sprinkle for the first time, playing a character called Mistress Candace. There's Annie. From the second she came onto the screen, I fell in love with this sultry voiced mistress. Let me tell you a little bit about the bitches that are chained. I love her. She says, this is Annie and she has stolen my manuscript. The manuscript will be returned. And keep in mind that this manuscript is really nothing more than this. That's some pretty bad Chinese writing, but I don't know why I'm making them all look like music notes, and God, that one looks like a swastika. But this is my Chinese writing, and that's what the manuscript looks like. She just said to the audience, enjoy the show. So she just called over her slave, Ron. She says, you deserve to fuck this bitch for all the hard work you put into making this show possible. She asks him what he's gonna do to her, and he says, well, I'm gonna take out this big vibrator while I, while I masturbate to you. He's got a vibrator like the one from Bachelor Party that the hookers use. Vibrators must have been really hard to conceal as a masturbating woman in the 70s. It was the size of a lava lamp. You had to unplug it and wrap it up around its cord. Looks like a microphone or an ultrasound thing. He's rubbing her stomach with it. While doing this to her, Ron says, you better give me that manuscript. And she says, no, I'll never give it to you. Now she's withholding the manuscript. She didn't even know where it went. They didn't even look at it. God, she's got a fucking brown ass crack. Big and brown throughout the whole crack. And surrounding the brown asshole was a constellation of pink dots. Oh, she's got a zitty ass. So on this ass that looks like it had just been attacked by a swarm of mosquitoes, Ron ejaculates all over it. He just called out to Annie Sprinkle, Thank you, mistress. I needed that. Appreciate you. Let me fuck her for a couple of minutes here. Next to the character, Annie, is her friend Kitty, who is still being sexually tortured until this guy comes all over the place. Oh my god, what the fuck kind of old face was that? You gotta see this. You gotta see this guy's face. So this crossbreed between Freddie Mercury and Tim Curry triggered me to start doing my Tim Curry impression once again. Give yourself over to oriental pleasure. As I was singing, Mistress Candace then drags this really gay looking guy onto the stage. It turns out that this guy is the prisoner Annie's brother. She just looked up and one of the guys is holding her brother and he's naked. She said, no, not my brother. She says, oh God, please don't make me do anything to him. Here, I'll give you the manuscript, I promise. I mean, she's not hiding it from them. I think she lost it herself. Her and her stupid friend. They walked in and they dropped it. But her word is not good enough, so they're forcing incest upon them. What is going on? They got the brother's legs tied up like this. And she's in between his legs. And he just grabbed her fist and said, stuff it up your brother's ass. And he's going to make her fist her brother. The brother and sister scene will have everybody clapping their hands except for Annie. They lube the hell out of her hand with a whole bunch of Crisco and then... Now she pushed her feet. Oh my God. Oh my God. She's totally fisting him deep while licking his balls. I didn't hear the guy say, lick his balls too. She's just doing that on her own. I was shocked by how graphic this fisting scene was. And there's still more shocking material to come. Oh my god, she is fisting him to, to here. This movie packs a punch right up your asshole. Oh my god, it looks like Lon Jean's cock. And she just pulled her hand out and it slipped out. Now she's back in there and it's just sliding in because it's so lubed up. She's in there checking his fucking pulse. Then this guy says, enough with the hand, bring out the dildo. 
That thing is the size of a small totem pole and color. This dildo was not shaped like a penis, it was shaped like a big log. I really think she was fucking this guy with a piece of firewood. I thought the vibrator was big. It then jumps to the girl's apartment where their boyfriends are looking for them. Well, one of them finds the pad of paper behind all the furniture and says, said, oh, look here, behind the couch and under the fucking plant is a small piece of paper. It must be a manuscript. He says, look, there's an address here. It must be for some sort of oriental torture group. Meanwhile, back at the torture group, it's time for another shocking scene. Here she calls a volunteer up on stage who looked like Kevin Nealon. Now you're going to be a good boy for me, aren't you? Yes, mistress. You're going to amuse me. You're going to make me happy. Annie Sprinkle is a gay man's definition for fabulous. When you hear gay people say fabulous, this is what they mean. I mean, they say, wow. They say, she is fucking fabulous. He strips down to these leather bikini bottoms, and then she just pulled his dick out through his leather underwear and just slapped it. She's hitting it really hard with this leather glove. And Kevin Nealon's like, ooh. The dialogue in this scene, which is fairly long, is excellent. This movie is very quotable. Make passionate love to my whip. That's a close-up of his penis and she's slapping it really hard. Oh, it's like playing ping pong. It's like playing ping pong. Oh my god, she's pulling on his dick and hitting that, then she's hitting his balls, showing his hands chained up, and she's punching him in the balls hard. Oh my god, she's pulling on his balls and his dick. Do you think I could stretch them to China? I wonder how far I could stretch them. Do you think I could stretch them to China? If she can go to China simply to pull a dick in balls, I think she could pick up another manuscript while she was there. She is smacking them like it's a fucking orphan. Oh god, she's got a clothespin and she pinched it onto his balls. You it fell off. You broke it! She says, I'm gonna squeeze it hard so that... So hard that it leaves a hole. She is kind of a bitch. Once his dick and balls are completely covered in clothespins, she tells one of her servants to go get the mat. Uh-oh. She's gonna lay him down and she's gonna piss on him. I know it. Annie Sprinkle got her name because she likes to sprinkle people with her piss. And she's standing over him, and she's pissing into his mouth, and he's jacking off. She's walking over him, peeing all over him. Listen to all her piss. She's pissing on his cock now. And he's coming. It then abruptly cuts to the basement slash dungeons where the boyfriends run in to rescue the girls. It's the two boyfriends and they're saving the girls. The boyfriend says he found their location because he spotted the manuscript behind all the furniture. He says Chang Lee wrote the address on it so we were able to track you down. How he knows who Chang Lee is or that his name is Chang Lee is beyond me. He then says, come on girls, let's go. And they're walking away. Let the bitch bleed, the wall said. Fade to black. And that's it. So that was Oriental Techniques of Pain and Pleasure. When I started this movie, I had no idea how shocking it was going to be. Yeah, I'd say there's definitely pain in this. Uh, being fisted by your sister would not only hurt Physically, I think that would hurt emotionally as well. So what do I give oriental techniques of pain and pleasure on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a four. Annie Sprinkle was amazing. Mixed in with her very evil and dark dialogue, she would occasionally insert some very funny lines, which made it all that much more enjoyable. The dildo she was putting up her brother's ass was bigger than this. I'm not even kidding. It was bigger than this. It looked like a Yule log. So if you're in the mood for some incestuous rectal damage, cock torture, rape, and piss, Check this one out. So, 
Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.